Shalom. <clears throat> Brother Kabad back with another GMS lesson. GMS keep pushing. Before I go any further, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, by Hashem, and Kapodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching us his truth according to the Bible and do well. And also the one, the artist, and said, I can for the four points of the earth, pushing his truth through diligence and sincerity. All right, we're going to get right on into it, man. Thanks killing. Because that's what this day represents, man. It represents the slaughter, the robbery, the rape of the Gadites, the Reubenites, the so-called Native Americans. Most of American history depicts a hospitable first Thanksgiving. 1621 grateful pilgrims in the New World offer a warm invitation to Usamequin and members of his Wampanoag tribe. But the chairman of the Mashpee Wampanoags calls that depiction a myth. You know, we sent 90 men over to the first settlers to see why they were shooting guns and practicing arms to say, hey, what are you preparing for? And they were preparing for some kind of war to take our people down. And so we sat down with them to have a discussion and let their let a feast. All my research, I... Some elders say the so-called first Thanksgiving is not worth celebrating. It's the one day out of the year when all of America bows their head and gives thanks for everything that was taken from us. 83-year-old Tall Oaks Rhode Island home is an archive of Native American history. Amongst the books and pictures and relics is a copy of a 1970s speech written by his late friend Wamsutta. He'd been invited to a celebration of the arrival of the Mayflower. When he had to uh, give the speech, he put it all together, and when he presented it to them, they said that, uh, well, we can't allow you to read that because 90% of the people would walk out. We, the Wampanoag, Wamsetta wrote, welcomed you, the white man, with open arms, little knowing that it was the beginning of the end. He said he wasn't going to change it. Let's grab a few precepts, man. I mean, so many is coming to mind, but, you know, this is the handiwork of the devil, man. Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. This is, this is what he does, man. And you, 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 you Negroes and you Latinos celebrate this day and hold it in high esteem, man, when it was to take down the slaughter of your brothers, the Native Americans, man. And your sisters, man. You know, you should really be ashamed of yourselves. Oh, it's tradition, sedition. Well, that tradition is wicked, man. You know? This is St. John chapter 10, verse 10. This is the thief. Esau Edom is a thief. He stole his land, man. Right? He didn't ask for it. He just took it. Thieves don't ask for anything. They just take it. And that's what he did, man. St. John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill. You know? Slaughtering the natives in, in, in droves, man. S slaughtering the food source, the bison, man. Who does that? The wicked, the devil, man. And to destroy, destroy the families, giving us smallpox blankets, right? Giving us all types of diseases, uh, the, the cold, all right? It says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly, right? And the Lord came so that we could have life, man. But that's the MO of this devil, man. Let's grab another one. <clears throat> this is Psalms 55 and 20. It says, He hath put forth his hands as such it be at peace with him. Who was at peace with this devil, man, when he came over, man? Gad and Reuben. And let's see what the so-called white man did. 
He had broken his covenants. Every covenant he made with the natives, man. The so-called Native Americans, man. This devil broke it, right? But yet, this devil wants you to be honest when you go into his courtroom. He wants you to be honest when you get stopped by the cops. Man, the hell with this devil, man. This man has ha, ha, has no type of uh, 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 um, decent character in him, man. Decent bone in him, man. Verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. You know, and like and, and, and like the uh, the guy I said in in the opening, why are they why are they practicing shooting? You know what I'm saying? Why are they practicing shooting? What what are they getting ready for? You know, and it was to take them over, man. It was to take us over, man. But y'all, you Israelites hold this devil in high esteem, man. You vote for this devil, man. When this devil hasn't changed, man. Verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Oh, we're here. We want peace. We want to live together in, in happiness and harmony. But war was in his heart. Because this devil had a prophecy to fulfill, man. And the ones in this truth, we understand that. But it still doesn't take away from the fact of how wicked this devil is, man. War is in this man's heart, man. What you Israelites don't understand, man. And still is to this very day. Getting ready to vaccine everybody. Get ready to uh, uh, microchip everybody, man. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. And that's 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 the MO, man. That's that's what this devil does. Let's get back into the clip. And so he withdrew from that. And Wamsada, Tall Oak, and other activists of the American Indian movement created their own event for the following Thanksgiving Day. We decided that we would declare it a national day of mourning uh, for native peoples. Every fourth Thursday of November since, Native Americans have gathered at the Statue of Massasoit on Coles Hill in Plymouth to tell the truth that Wamsutta could not. We still have to retell the story. But Toen Monroe is the co-leader of the National Day of Mourning, now in its 50th year. Many more non-Native people are interested in listening to contemporary Indigenous voices and the messages that we bring that are important to everyone. There's a monument every few feet here on Coles Hill to the Pilgrim's first burial ground, to Plymouth Rock, the statue of Massasoit. But this stone commemorating the National Day of Mourning honors, as the plaque reads, the struggles of Native peoples to survive today. Not just a statement of history, but an acknowledgement of the present. We're still fighting with our very own trustee, who we had treaties with, that we agreed to have a relationship back in the 1700s. And we're still fighting that fight today to have our lands. This Thanksgiving, Tall Oak, the only surviving co-creator of the National Day of Mourning, hopes that you think less about the natives' contribution to a meal nearly 400 years ago and more about, as the plaque on the monument reads, the genocide of millions of their people, the theft of their land, and the relentless assault on their culture. It was a terrible way to show your gratitude after you've been given everything to make you uh, make it possible for you to survive uh, look this is supposed to be a time of mourning man this is when he took down gad and reuben man but yet what what, what do jake do what did you so-called negroes do what do you so-called latinos do right you know you get down you celebrate it you know and have a good old time, man. Sirach 12 and 10. Never trust thy enemy. Romans 15 and 4. The things are written before times written for our learning. You see what this devil does have done to our people, man. And our people still trusting this man. Trusting this man's system. 
trusting everything that came out this, this devil's mouth, man. But the, the scripture said his words were softer than oil, smoother than butter. Never trust thy enemy, Sirach 12 and 10, for like it's iron rust is so of his wickedness. Right? His wickedness is going to eventually uh, uh, show through. It's going to come. Verse 11, though he humble himself and, and go crouching. That's how he gets you, Jakes, man. Humble himself, you know, all soft-spoken. And y'all believe this devil, man. But then when your brother tell you this man ain't nothing but the damn devil, it goes to one ear, not the other. It says, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass. And thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. That's right. The wickedness is still there. Still there. Verse 12. Set him not by thee. And that's what we did, man. We set this devil by us, man. Least when he have overthrown thee, he shall stand up in thy place. And that's what he did right here in, the, in, in America, man. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. And thou at the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. So remember these words, man. But guess what? On the flip hand, there's a recompense. There's a recompense for what this devil has done, man. Okay? Let's go to, um... Um... What's that? Let's go to man. So many of my minds just racing right now. You know, and I, and I'm mad, man. I'm mad, man. Cause I know a, a lot of people, right? A lot of you Jakes are out there celebrating this day of of of, of a takedown of your brother, man. This is uh, <clears throat> Second Thessalonians chapter one verse seven. Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High to recompense tribulation to them that troubled you. Now, who troubled us, man? Esau, you know. <clears throat> Up until this very day, man. You know, you got gathering the reservations, right? Living hor horrendous lives. Living in, uh, 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 um. Living in in, in in poverty, man. You know, I did a lesson back here some time ago. He had a uh, guy living in cardboard boxes, man. You know? But, uh, but like, um, with like a metal roof, man. You know, you got guy drinking all types of, uh, you know, fingernail polish remover, anything that. They got alcohol in it, man. To take away the pain of what they're going through, man. But the Lord said what? 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. Seeing as a righteous thing with the Most High to recompense tribulation to them that troubled you. Right? And and this devil, Esau, even the so-called white man, has troubled us, man. As long as you other tribes, man. So you should be... This is a time of mourning, man. This ain't a time to be celebrating, getting together with your family and being happy. Right? It's really a time to be repenting and turning back to the Heavenly Father, as always. It says, And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord, your house shot, shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Yeah, rest in this truth, man. You gotta rest in this truth, man. Let's grab another one, because this truth is the comforter, man. This truth is the comforter, man. Um, Let's grab another one. Let's go to... uh. Uh, let's see here. I'm looking for something real fast. I'll probably grab one or two more and and wrap it up. Let's see here. Let's go to. Um. Fuck it, give me one second. Okay. Okay, I found it. I found it. Get 
get to it. This is a uh, Ruth chapter two verse twelve. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given to thee of the Lord power of Israel, under those whose wings thou art come to trust. See, so the Lord's gonna recompense thy work, man, as a reward be given thee of the Lord power of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. So coming back to the Lord is gonna be a reward, man. But if you're steadily in the ways of this world, the reward for you is death and destruction. Let's grab another one. Let's go to Let's go to Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah. It's Isaiah 14, and this is future prophecy for the nation of Edom, man. You know, look at the, um, if you look at the, um, the, um, the Bible Compact Dictionary, the Zondervan, go to, uh, 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 Esau Edom, right? Look at that name up, and it tells you he is the, um, um, he's going to receive great future judgment, man. All right? For all the wickedness he have done. This is Isaiah 14 and 24, 21. It says prepare slaughter for his children. For the iniquity of their fathers. Right? That they do not rise nor possess the land. Nor fill the face of the world with cities. Okay? And that's what that's what the Lord is saying man. Because the Lord speaks to his men. Speaks to his prophets. He said prepare slaughter for his children man. Esau Edom. And that's what we're waiting on, man. Because he has not been, he has not received his judgment for what he has done to the children of Israel yet, man. For touch, touching the apple of the Lord's eye, man. No more Mount Rushmore's. No more cities. No more pipelines. Right? You devils are going to pay, man. You devils are going to pay, man. Grab one one last one, wrap it up. Let's go to one last one. Let's go to This is Numbers twenty four and eighteen. And Edom shall be a possession. Edom's going into slavery, my man. Man, woman, and child. Seir, right? Where e e Esau dwelt also should be a possession for from for his enemies. Right? And Israel shall do valiantly. So payback is coming to you, devils, man. You're gonna lose it all, man. You're gonna lose it all. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Bible. Shalom.